Hello everyone. I think that we are live here. So let's see what I think so. So if you can tell me if you can hear me, that would be awesome. So tell me if the sound is okay. I think we're good. I see snowy Iowa. Yeah, it's been just a little. What's up, biscuit? Um, it's just snowy a little bit, but it's been cold though this week. Cold. Last week, I mean, it was in the fifties. Okay, I see people jumping in. Awesome. Oh, perfect. I was reading. I I get distracted. Just wanted to make sure that. I feel like it's something stuck in my tooth. Um, make sure that um, everything was good. So tonight's going to be a kind of easy. Uh, I'm using, <clears throat> I thought to use designer series paper again in a, uh, the Denti Flower from Celebration sold out. So uh, I know a lot of you are going to say, oh, that's what I wanted. I think personally, Stamping Up did an amazing job with the inventory of Celebration this year because we just got 12 days left. And today was the first that we sold out from any of the product of Celebration. So I think overall, they did amazing. So yes, you know, we know in advance, but we always think, oh, I get a bit more time. Well, the Nanty Flower, it's sold out. I expect other stuff to sell out as we get closer to the end but um and so i reverse and i decide to do oops in the country so i shared that two weeks ago three weeks ago that's when i do the sepia and the black and white uh, polaroid uh, thing so tonight it's going to be an easy watercolor so let me flip you down and we're going to go right at it okay so let me flip you down here. Here we go. So I'm going to use the Stamparatus. It's funny because I was talking to um, one of my teammates, Barb, and she said, you never use that thing, that flip and that. And I told her, I said, I use it when I really have to. And I told her, I said, I use it just two weeks ago with this set when we did the Scipio. I still have the Scipio card it was not claimed. So that was the sepia and then the black and white um, that was claimed. So it's gone. So um, that's it. So this, see, it's been in the water. That was the last uh, time I used it. See the brown? That was the last time I used it. So I got a piece of um, watercolor paper. I kind of measured before. I'm not sure on the measurement. Maybe I'm going to have to do some trim. Colleen, I am so glad you're here. Perfect. I will get you on your landline after because when you call, I can hear you, but you cannot hear me. So it's something weird with the phone. So I will check my email and make sure. And I'm looking right now. Okay, I don't know how you send your, um, I don't have no email or no message right now with your uh, house line. So if you can uh, try that back, that would be awesome. Uh, text me or whatever. I don't know what's going on with the phone because I talked to friends and I didn't have no uh, problem. It's this T-Mobile. I'm not on T-Mobile. I'm on Verizon. So I have no clue. So if you can e email me at Frenchie Stamps. Uh, go at, on my blog at Frenchie Stamp. Right at the, the top, it says contact me. Click on that and send me your landline so I can give you a call. Okay. The watercolor paper, it's three and a quarter by four and a half. And I personally love to work in the uh, corner. Always. Uh, that's my... Um, I give you a call, Colleen. Okay, I'm going to... 
I give you a call on your cell. You pick up, but you don't hear me. So you say hello, 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 but you don't hear me. So contact me by email and then give me your uh, house phone or something like that, okay? Because it seems I can hear you, but you don't hear me. Sorry, this customer tried to call me and it's, it's been a challenge. Okay, so I'm going to put that here. I like to work in the corner. I don't like to use the magnet. It's just for me pulling that magnet and so on. I just like to, uh, at all possibility, I like to use in the corner. Sometimes we can, but anytime that I can, I go right in the corner. Yes, last week it was your cell phone, but I don't know if you tap something, Colleen. It looked like uh, you mute. I don't know if you try to use your phone to deal with somebody else or what. I have no clue what's going on, any, but I know I can hear you. Here we go. Oh, yeah, yeah, soft suede, okay? You want to stamp that in soft suede. Now... I'm going to use the watercolor brush and <clears throat> we're going to watercolor this. Let me remove this. And we're going to use back the stamp radius there. So I'm going to use Pierre Pizzazz. I'm going to use Cajun Craze. I'm going to use Melon Mambo. Some of you, that's going to give you a heart attack, but that's, I use my lids most of the time. This is a new one, so I'm going to, I mean, a new, uh, the old design. So we're going to have to squeeze it hard. If many of you, it's too hard to do and see just a little bit, let me show you what you can do with that. So I know many, many, many of you seeing my ink pad like that give you a heart attack, okay? So what you can do, it's um, take a clear block and voila. So that's going to be my balmy blue here, going to be my clear block there. Now I'm going to take, uh, and this you just unscrew this, open this up. This is the old one, but it's do the same, you unscrew, except the new one though, it's the reverse, the way you think you should go, it go the it's screwed up reverse. Now you add water there. Yes, Ollie, I knew you would be like, ooh. So take a deep breath, all is good. Now I'm gonna go, and what I like to do when I watercolor, it's, oh, that's not the stamp. I like to have, I'm gonna move my pad like this. I like to have my, uh, stamp or not my stamp but my cover beside me or the catalog so then I can guide myself okay so I'm gonna go here and I'm gonna do this step I'm gonna do most of the thing but where is the flower I'm gonna keep the flower see it's a little bit of flowers on the side so it's gonna be very vintage but it's not sepia it look a bit like how I started last time but we're going to add some color this time. Add here. Now I'm going to bring this down here. Here we go. And here it's a lot of flowers. I'm going to leave it like that. Here you get flowers right there. Um, you know what? I think that I can bring you a little bit more closer here. Let me see. So you guys can see more the way that I watercolor that. Like I said, it's very simple though, okay? Here we go. Now you're going to see a little bit more the way that I process that. So right here, you get the flowers also in all on the side. Here you get a, a, like a pot. Now all this, it's flowers. 
And here I'm going to do the frame of the door. Little step here. And just a little bit. Now I need more water and usually I squeeze it on my end because I don't want it too much on my paper. So I'm just going to add a bit here. See, I'm just brushing very lightly, age that up a little bit here. Okay, now I'm going to take Cajun craze on the side here. You don't see me, but I just use a tiny little bit. I'm going to do the flower pot here. It's more like a clay. That's what it reminds me of. And now, while that is colored there, you know what? I need my inky, inky rag. Here we go. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to let that dry. Now I'm going to go with the green and I am just going to add a little bit of the green here and there. And I am not following nothing in the picture. Really. I'm just guiding where it's brown there. Uh, really it's nothing to follow. I'm just, okay. This one, I'm going to leave it that way because I don't want it to get a Mod pod of mud because it's still wet. So now I'm going to come on the side. So when you switch colors, you want to make sure that you don't go over each color when they're wet. So you want it dry. And this is, I don't know if I can call that watercolor because really I'm just scribbling. Okay. I'm not, oops, that's too dark. So you want to make sure you get water because that was almost just ink that I had there. I forget this little over here. And then I'm going to go ahead and um, I'm going to add some of the <clears throat> terracotta pot there. I, that's the, the Cajun craze. Now I'm going to use my balmy blue here. And I'm going to put that over here so it's more like a window in the door there it's going to be very little color on this see you can see that right okay now i'm going to go with the melon mambo and i'm just going to add little drops those little drops are my little flowers. It's like a little climbing, whatever, whatever flower, what it's called. See that? Voila. And over here, and then we have to add just a little bit at the top. Someplace I don't even know if it's flowers. I'm just adding as I go, okay? A little bit on the side here. Okay, now that is done. I'm going to go back with, I want a little bit of terracotta here. That when I say terracotta, I'm using Cajun craze. Okay, I'm gonna go add just a little bit over here. Now I'm gonna add a little bit of more uh, brown. That's the soft suede. I want very light though. So I'm gonna add that over here. I'm gonna age the wall a little bit here. See, my, my end, it's pretty much my palette for the color, okay? Because I don't want too dark, so this way I can wash it off. And then I'm going to add a bit on the side. Okay, I still need some green on that plant there. It's like those spider plant there. That's what it reminds me in the picture. See, you don't want too dark. If you get it too dark, keep on washing it, okay? 
because you don't want it the the wash darker than your image there. Okay, that looked pretty good. Now I'm gonna go ahead and uh, add more of the <clears throat> on the green there, and then we're ready to assemble that card and make that go very vintage okay so i'm gonna go ahead here and this for me this is very relaxing i love to just color like this and watercolor it's very forgiving and this is watercolor paper and i strongly recommend to use watercolor paper when you watercolor the main reason it's because it's cotton so you can go back and forth without making a hole in it okay so, okay, I see some uh, people say they have that set and they didn't know what to do. So uh, the black and white, I don't have it because it went away, but make sure you look. And I'm going to have that video at the end of this one. I did the Scipio in the black and white last uh, couple weeks ago. It was cool. Okay, we're going to let that just calm down. So while that do, we're going to prepare the rest because I need to let that dry completely before we stamp it back. And when we're going to stamp it back, it's going to bring it right back to life. Now, before I forget, I'm going to wipe this here. That's where I put my blue on it. I don't want to. Okay, I got a crumb cake that measured, measure what? Five and a half by eight and a half, score at four and a quarter. And we got a card front. Now I'm gonna need a very vanilla envelope that I can reach right here. Okay, so we can, and then I'm thinking we're gonna put maybe the vellum on top. I don't know, we'll see, I brought the vellum. So let's, um, I'm gonna stamp this here. But this going to be stamped, it's, okay, that's going to have to stamp after because it's not in the middle. So let's hope it's dry enough. I think so. I could use the E tool too. So let's use, um, this was soft suede. And you know what? This, I feel this is going to do a fiasco there. Okay, now we're going to stamp that back. So that's the beauty of a stamparatus. You can go back on your image. Some people say watercolor. For me, I absolutely love it. I think the one that say it's not their thing, it's because you don't let the color dry in between. You touch two color and it's just make a mud pile. Voila. Is that come to life? Now, and this year I'm going to remove that because I want that stamp in the center of the thing. So instead of mount it back there, let me bring this back here. Let me smack that there. Okay, so um, I don't want it this dark. So what I'm going to do is stamp off, stamp off. Now I'm going to take my very vanilla and put it right at the side there. It's just going to give a shadow, okay? Perfect. Now while we get that, you know what? We can do the same thing with our envelope. It's just give a nice shadow. Okay, now I don't think I'm going to use the vellum. I think it's going to take away from what I want to do. So let's bring the die cut machine with well worn. I got that, the well worn out, but I don't think it's good. I was debating if I was using the well worn or the the vellum. I play with this after that I find out the paper was sold out. I'm like, oh, I'm going to play with that a little bit then. Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and use this. 
Yeah, Kathleen, it's funny because me and the blending uh, pen with the um, ink, it's one that I get a tough time. I think I pressed too hard on it. Now I'm going to put that here. This is the well-worn, so it got words. It gets kind of some scribbly. Uh, very vintage, I think. We're going to take this, and we're going to roll on. Now, I want to share something, too, for the inside. So, sometimes you don't, you don't know what you're going to put inside and so on. So, what you can do, it, like this one, if it's a small one and it doesn't matter the direction, you can put just at the end here and then go through. Well, I cannot do that with this because it gets the writing. So, what you can do, it still place it here. Now, you're going to, the inch go first. Now, what you're going to do, it's place it where you want it to start the, the embossing. I'm going to hold this till it engage. Hold it tight there. You saw my finger was really cramping there. Et voila, in the bang, that's okay. It's in between. So now it's going to go in the right direction. See? And I got that little imprint down here, just a little bit. So you get placed right and so on. Okay, so that's quite a bit of different, uh, well, kind of old technique and so on. But I think it's a good refresh course. Now, hmm. You know what? Let me try something. Let me try to emboss this here. I was visualized something and it's not. That's why it's called create on the fly, my friend. So hold on to your thoughts there. And let me see what I can do here. Yeah, it's take too much. It, my picture in the back would have to be way darker. So we will not use that. But see, if my picture in the back like this here, it would uh, see. But that's okay. Sometimes you try thing and it don't work. So this was, um, what was this size? This was three and a quarter by four and a half. And we're going to mount that on an early espresso that measure four by five and a quarter. Here we go. Here we go. Oh, Colleen, I see your memo there. I'm still going to try to call you after we're done. Um, like I said, I don't know why. And I don't have no email from you neither. This is the strangest thing. And we're going to put that right here. Um, you know what? See the edge there? Let me... Here we go. Now I'm making this part very smooth, and then I'm going to go and really rip everything else. Uh, I'm looking, if I would be uh, right here. So we're going to cut this by one inch. By one. And then again at one. And then, you know what? I don't want, I want soft suede. I need a different color. Tone on tone on what I'm doing won't be good. So hold on. Don't go feed the chicken yet. Okay, here it is. One, that's soft suede. Soft suede, one by one, 
and then I'm going to come with my scissors and we're going to chop that up like no. So we're going to go this way and then we're going to go this way. Now this you could use um, glue. I like to use glue dots when I do my corners. So we're going to go ahead, put at the three tips, glue dots, glue dots. It's one, lost one there. And then I'm going to go about, oh, maybe one eighth of an inch from the corner there. See? So we're going to vintage that a little bit. So my corner, I'm one that use a lot of glue dots. I, me and glue dots are very, very good friends. Like I refer to my glue dot a lot of time, it's like my duct tape in my craft room. It is. It fix everything. A little bit of tuck and pull, and then you put that glue dot in. Nobody know that you fix anything. It looked like it was perfect. Here we go. Whoops. Whoops. Oh, this one is alive. Sometimes you get some, they're very alive, right? This one don't want to go straight. Here we go. Et voila. How simple that was. And that soft suede, yeah, much better than going tone on tone. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and I wanted a greeting and I didn't know which one. And the more I was looking, I'm going to go with thinking of you in beauty of friendship. And we're going to go ahead and I thought, yes, I did. Okay, this is really want to fill off. So <clears throat> when you get a stamp, especially photopolymer, if it gets like the dust or sometimes it don't want to stick good, it's just not sticking good, you can wash them in Dawn liquid soap. That is my number one thing. Or if you're live like here, I cannot go at the dishwasher sink and so on. I use uh, hand sanitizer. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead and boom. So now I'm going to stamp that with soft suede. And those corner, it's like, remember those, well, I didn't do scrapbook like that, but my mom had scrapbook that was those pockets. It remind me of that, you know, that black or that brown. It remind me of that. All right, Skokai, a little bit. Let's go back. I'm going to rip the things. I don't know why it have to be straight, really. Okay, now I got that. I'm going to go ahead and cut this this way. And then, oops, this one this way. That's my new way to cut my uh, paper now. You know what? That I'm going to bring the paper cutter. And talking about the paper cutter with small pieces, this is one thing that I absolutely love of, I say, the new design. I mean, how many years we get this one? I don't know. But the other one, we couldn't do that. We had to use... Um, a post-it note to all a little piece on in and this one here you can put it in put it there and right here on the edge see it go up and down put your finger there if voila it don't your paper stay there while the other one is just go floop and it was sliding this one don't slide okay so that's this paper cutter, it is amazing for little peas, absolutely. Now, what I'm going to be doing here, I recommend that you use an old pair of scissors. 
So the older, the better. So if you get a pair of scissors that every time you cut, you know, it won't chop the paper, just put something on it and say it's for your distress. We used to have a tool for the distress, but um, I still have one maybe back there. Maybe not. I think when I move, I get rid of it because I'm like, it's just breeding some oxygen that I don't need it because I can use my scissors. So just be careful though, okay? I'm glad somebody loved vintage too because I absolutely love vintage. Now to vintage even more, what we're going to do, close your eyes because some of you are going to have maybe a heart attack. The best way for this though, it's to have it wet a bit. So I'm just going to use my, if you get your little spritz bottle, that's going to work good. But I just, when you wet it a little bit, this is going to help here. Just squeeze that. Now we're going to open that up. Now I'm going to go ahead and use, uh, what should I use? A blend, I think. I was thinking, should I use a blend or, I mean, a blending brush? Yeah. So this should be, I'm going to put, I don't want to put soft suede. It's too dark. I'm going to put crumb cake. I think I got that on my brush a bit, but not much. Going to use crumb cake. And then we're going to, so this year, if you like smooth and you don't like vintage, you know, you have to love vintage because most of us are on the vintage age, I think, right? I think most of my followers were a little bit more. I, I know we got some young one. Good. We need young one to keep this going. But I think we get people more in with experience. Put it that way. When we switch number, we get more experience. And see, I crumbed the paper. Somebody said, oh, I forgot about that. So it, old technique come good, right? So now we're going to, this still kind of wet. So let's wait a little bit. We're going to attach this in the front. Here it is. Oh, it would have bite me. And not to the front, but inside. So this is a good card thinking of you. It can be for a birthday. It can be for a get well. It can be for whatever. And one of the greeting that I really liked, it's just because, just because it's your birthday or just because you're sick or just because I'm thinking of you and so on or thinking of you. So that way you can use it for any, any occasion. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and this should be all the way dry, really. I bet I'm going to have to um, operate it before I mailed it, okay? Just, oops. Because when it's still wet, it don't glue good. See? So maybe this is going to have to be re-glue after I'm done the live, after it's dry. So now I'm going to take this, put that right here. Et voilà, my friend. So very, very simple. But then at the same time, if you love the vintage, I think this should call your name. So that is it. And then I'm looking of what we did last week. And I, I don't know what I did with my winner. So the following week, I'm going to have all this here. Because oh, that was a video I did. This is what we done last week, these two. And I don't have my winners. So I'm going to have to have the fall. Next week, it's no live, okay? Because I'm going to be playing in the snow. So no week, uh, no live, no create on the fly. So it's going to be the following week. And I will announce the winner of all those three here. I'm going to put it there. Make sure that I don't forget it. But here we go. See? I think that is very, very cool. I hope that I inspire you to at least try again, even if you say that 
watercolor, it's not, it looked better when I go this way. <coughs> when I say watercolor, you know, I hope that this really maybe make you at ease a little bit more to give it a try. See, I love, I love all those ages. See, we don't, I don't know if we got some millennium is, I think, is that the right word? Let's say 30 and below, they're rare, but we need to find them. We need to keep this uh, stamping going. So that is it. So note that next week, like I said, I'm going to be uh, spending time in the snow. I'm going to be, uh, I'm going in South Dakota snowmobile. So I cannot wait. I was raised, I said, on a snowmobile. We ride snowmobile back home. We had the trails. We would go at the camp. I would get up on Saturday morning and I was on the snowmobile. Um, I joke, I say I was riding the snowmobile before uh, I was out of diapers. But seriously, I mean, uh, every weekend I would be on that snowmobile. We had some sugar camp and camps that we can go and eat. And I was in elementary and going on big trips like that. It was amazing. So it's been a long time. So um, if the weather permit and so on, that's what I'm going to be doing next week. So I'm a little bit excited. Can you tell? So people's like, why you take a vacation in South Dakota in the winter? You know what? We have to enjoy this weather. It's, I think that it's some cool stuff in winter. And everybody's like, how can you, you know, leaving Texas, all the nice weather, and you come to this weather? And to be honest, four season, it's kind of nice, though. I mean, the eat, the, it's all nice. But I, I have to say, I think I'm a four season person. So... That is it, my friend. You get a little bit more than really I should have said about my personal life, but that's it. I Next week, none of the create on the fly. So it's going to, I'm going to catch you next week. So really I was live twice this week, right? So perfect. Till next time. Happy stamping, my friend. Bye-bye for now.